for been there. It's been a wet, 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 wet uh, in some parts of the country today, wherever you are hoping that uh, the weather has been very friendly. It's a Thursday, and it's good to have you here on the program, Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. Hoping that you are doing good wherever you are. Well, uh, the polity, as usual, you know, uh, yesterday we were talking. Could it be a coincidence that some issues are happening at the same time? Uh, by the way, I've not forgotten my name. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. As we speak today in Kaduna, if you are in Kaduna, well, the uh, trial of the Shiite leader, uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Yakub El Zizeki, will be on today. And you know, anytime that uh, trial is on, you know what Kaduna uh, used to be. So if you find yourself anywhere in Kaduna today, please. Uh, Avoid certain routes, especially any route that will lead to uh, Ibrahim Taiwo Road, where the premises of the court. Well, I, I'm sure Waf Road will be blocked. Certain roads within around the market will be blocked just to avoid anything on towards. If you have no business in those places, please try to avoid it. If you are in Abuja, as usual, we know Abuja has given a directive uh, yesterday that uh, even the uh, fountain uh, is no more a place for popular protest. So banning a protest is one thing. Adhering to read is another thing. Having the policemen to even actually uh, enforce that is entirely another thing. Enforce it even with civility is another issue. Uh, we've had situations where innocent people are picked up. Uh, in Kaduna, it, I mean, in Kaduna it happened. We're meant to understand some people are picked up uh, that, are, I mean, in the name of being Shiite, why some of them are not even uh, Shiite. So uh, we are pleading with the police to be please very civil, be very... Uh, I mean, you start in trying to get to the bottom of this. But again, you ask yourself, we ask here, is it a coincidence that we have so many things happening at the same time? The killing of a Funke uh, Olakurin, the daughter of the Afeni Ferry leader, Pa Ruben Fasorentin, seems to have opened a lot, I mean, a can of worms, or given some people some uh, excuses to actually come up with things that ordinarily we, should, we shouldn't be hearing. Is it a coincidence that at this time, good luck, Jonathan is asking, uh, that he said a 2004 uh, confab report should be implemented? Uh, when he had almost more than a year and he never implemented that. And uh, never mind that there were a lot of hues and cry as far as that uh, confab is, co is concerned. Again, to educate you or at least enlighten you, remember, APC then refused to be part of that confab. So a party that refused to be part of that confab, do you expect that party now in power to implement? Is it a coincidence that now we are having the issue of uh, Ruga settlement coming up and what have you? Uh, again, the taciturn nature of the federal government seems not to be helping the issues. So uh, that is our discourse this morning. National, why do we always regionalize national issues? On daily basis, as we speak, in Katina State, the home state of the president, people are being killed on daily basis. We can't remember any delegation that has visited Katina to condole with any family. But we saw what is going on in Akure. Akure, Akure has become a maker, maker of a sort. Where good luck, Jonathan, will leave Itu Otuoke to Akure to come and condole Fasoreti and say killings, killing of anybody is an act of terrorism. Never mind that we had so many killings, even under good luck, Jonathan. But then uh, there are so many issues there. We've had national leaders, people that ordinarily you call national leaders, now making regional, ethnic, and certain sentiment, a statement that shouldn't be coming uh, from them. So regionalizing national issues, directives and counter directives is our focus this morning. And we have with us this morning, uh, of course, he is a leader of a joint action committee of a Northern Youth Association. He's also a member member of a ARDP, Ariwa Research and Development uh, um, Project. Project, ARDP, that body that is convened by no less a personality by Dr. Usman Bugaji, one man who seems to be doing so much, uh, even though he, he, he might not be getting the support of the Northern governors. Again, that brings us to it. When he RDP a few weeks ago convened uh, Ariwa uh, con actually have a security uh, a, a meeting here to, to, to come out with ways to resolve this thing. Not a single Northern Governor attended that meeting. 
you get me right, quote me again, not a single northern governor, not even the, the state that hosted the that is Kaduna state, the governor neither sent a representative, at least not even a, an SA to say, go and represent me at this event. But now the same governors are talking of going to Canada. <laughs> it's, you, you just, sometimes you ask yourself, I mean, like they say in a local parlance, now who do us? You know, uh, it's it. Sometimes you 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 just that con cannot comprehend. So we shall be looking at this and more this morning. Wichala, it's good to have you here with us. Thank you this very morning. Much. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, let, 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 let's start from. Uh, we woke up on uh, the issue of the Hadas uh, living uh, the south. Should come back to the north for their safety and what if you things like that. But somebody will say, well, we don't even blame those who are, who are even saying that because we've seen a video that went viral where people went and uh, went after. Uh, nomadic Fulanese shouting, go away, we don't want you, and what if you, things like that. But this issue of Ruga, again, incidentally, it was at a RDP security listing, where Professor Jibril said it, that if time is not taken, this project is going to be killed with the name. Yeah. And barely two days later, mm -hmm. we saw it suspended by the president. Now, let's even start from that premise. Why should we take issues that are national in nature, regionalize it? Well, uh um, this is a very serious uh, uh, crisis that uh, is uh, that that is developing because mm. it, it 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 has even reached a point of crisis level if care is not taken, and uh, we are of the concern that uh, the federal government no. or, or let me be specific, the federal minister of agriculture mm. have not actually thought through this. Uh, policy because this is a policy that was uh, jointly all the critical stakeholders mm. were involved and a name that would be acceptable to all yeah. was even uh, agreed that the yeah. uh, uh, livestock development yeah, plan plan yeah. but uh, at the point federal government or federal minister of agriculture started by what they call cattle colony yeah. And then because of the sensitivity and the mutual uh, suspicion that today characterize our existence as communities, there are certain words that you need to avoid. Colony, cartoon. So definitely so community will not be comfortable with that kind of a, a name. Then with the and, and, that, and that led to the to the killing in the in the voice of uh, professor jibril ibrahim uh, that cattle colony because somebody will ask like i mean is it that the federal ministry of of, of uh, agri did not i mean think through this or it was a deliberate attempt by the staff within the ministry to kill this project precisely i think uh, there is this uh, conspiracy theory okay that there is deliberate uh, uh effort within the ministry mm -hmm. to even provoke this uh, uh, controversy so that at the end of the day, the actual uh, benefits or the actual uh, intention of the flag will not be, will not, will not see the light of the day. So you remember, even that colony was suspended. Yeah. Then, but it's, it's the same thing, it's just that the name that was given. Then later on, what we're expecting that the livestock development, yeah. this thing will be announced after extensive and elaborate, uh, robust uh, discussions, and then arriving at that, when they, uh, they were to announce it, it was again announced as Ruga. Mm. And Ruga Ruga, you know, this is a Fulani, uh, at least it's, it's, it's associated with the nomadic Fulani. Precisely. And you are saying that this thing is going to... The, lab, the way they put it, it will give the impression as if certain uh, community or tribe mm. are going to be imposed over order or they are going to be given a prefer preferential uh, treatment, which actually is not the point. But, but, but again, that created a lot of uh, unnecessary diversion, unnecessary crisis, unnecessary uh, controversy. And today, you, you, you see even those who are supposed to know, like we in the North, having understand the, the crisis and the, 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 and the pain that our brothers are going through, instead of us to be very, very calculated, very deep in our approach, to be very tactical, mm. we are again joining the world wagons. We are, we are playing into the hands of the mischief maker, who wants, at the end of the controversy, the real content 
or what the federal government, federal plan. government plan will present completely uh, disappear. But, but but can we can we actually we we've seen people who know next to nothing about this issue coming out to say something. Uh, just yesterday I was reading where one of the uh, southern states, one of the southeast states, the attorney general came out and said anybody selling ed, any piece of land beyond five hectares, uh, the state must probe it because they don't want anybody selling land for any Ruga settlement. Again, uh, again, you, you ask yourself, I mean, it's just like somebody sitting in Kaduna or in Kandu or in Abuja and say, look, if uh, somebody is going to sell a piece of land for a building of shop, we must actually ensure that we check so that nobody will sell a piece of land to somebody who will build a spare part, uh, uh, this thing and whatever you, things like that. Now, do we actually blame these people where the federal government, the president who initiated this, these issues came to the public, it became a national debate, because whatever we're going to say, the box stops on Mr. President's uh, table. Do we blame people who are coming out to make noise even without any education about this, or do we blame the federal government itself who refused to educate the people about the same policy you want to implement? Well, um, you see, again, we can understand that uh, mm. the Federal Minister of Agriculture mm. and in extension the federal government has not done a thorough job. Mm. Because apart from the advocacy, apart from the enlightenment that's supposed to preload the yeah. productions, mm. I don't think even proper consultations was carried out. Fine. Because now that uh, we know by the, uh, the, 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 the land use degree mm. actually uh, gave state government yeah. the power mm. to own land. Yeah. Even though there are clauses that said when there is federal overriding federal, uh, you know, uh, interest. But again, if you have such a deep, uh, robust consultations with the state government and you are on the same page, mm -hmm. by the time this uh, policy is going to be announced, you will not hear this kind of. Uh, but, 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 but yes, coming out, coming, coming but, but even more add that, mm -hmm. we've seen a situation where the federal government came out, though belated, to say, no, there is no place the federal government is going to grab any piece of land from anybody. Yes. Uh, we just allow states that actually are interested to provide this piece of land and will provide all the support and what have you. Again, uh, we've seen states that still come out. Benway State, for instance, the grandstanding we get from Ottomans who will say, no, there was a plan by federal government to grab piece of land. We've seen the same thing with um, uh, Tarah a state governor who sadly will come out and say he has to beg his own children to come and stay in Nigeria and that is a sitting governor now something happened to his house in Abuja the children have run back again to US now he doesn't know what to do I mean this is a number one citizen the grandstanding we see from some of these governors northern governors at that let's even leave being well of it Taraba state where you have large number of ethnic Fulanis I mean, should we be getting that from some of these governors? So let's see what you are saying. Mm. If, for instance, the government has, the federal government has done a thorough job, mm. bring them on board, mm. sit with them, discuss, and there's mutual, you know, agreement yeah. with this. So I cannot see how somebody will now go back and begin to denounce such plan. But put that aside. The point of the issue is this. As Northerners, I think at this particular time, it's not about this grandstanding. It's not about uh, yeah. playing to the gallery that like, uh, somebody will... Or play will, politics with issues like this. Precisely. And then that is why you see, even at the ERDP level, mm. understanding the deep-rooted uh, nature of this crisis, mm. it requires careful studies. So that is why professionals... Uh, people of uh, from from the intelligence, mm. from the agricultural department, even from the uh, uh, intelligent, you know, community, came together. They had a robust, you know, uh, uh, discussions and they plan on how this thing can be, how how they can help the government to implement or even achieve uh, consensus. Around, around some of, some of issues. these issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, but just sadly, like you said, apart from the deputy governor of uh, Adamawa State, yeah, who, attended, who the attended on behalf of his uh, yeah. governor, yeah. sadly, many of them could not. Uh, not many, or all of them. When? We have 19 northern states, when, only Adamawa uh, sent a representative. Precisely. So, so, what happened to the 18 others? So, uh, uh, of course, so we don't know, but I think it's unfortunate because they need to seriously 
This is a very, it's a local problem. Mm. And the funny solution to this problem must be locally Don't sourced. Run. Okay. Because these are, even the community that are involved mm. in this, who are also facing, uh, becoming the victim, the farmer, the herder, yeah. they were all in that conflict. Yeah. So it was an, a, 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 an opportunity for the policy makers, the... Key into the, return. The, yeah, everybody sat together, they look at each other, they come off with a... They identify what the issues are, yeah. come up with a roadmap, and today the solution has been found. And they were assembling it in a very uh, concrete form, and they see how it can be given to the necessary authority for implementation. Oh, oh. So this is how to go. But not going on, 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 on media to say that giving ultimatum for people to come back. Yeah, well, what well, plan do you have well, for well, them? Well, Musha, Musha will get to that. Yes. Before, before we get to that, because within the week we had someone here who all his life, all he knows is animal husbandry. He's an animal scientist, mm -hmm. Mr. Matthew Rikichi, mm -hmm. who can tell you where you have a, each and every grazing reserve in this country. That's correct. Who knows in and out the nook and crannies and what have you things. Unfortunately, we have state today where you're having a, a, a people who study political science as commissioners of our Greek. And we, I mean, having I mean having a round peg in square holes and what have you things like that. But let's let, let, let's come down to that. If, for instance, we're meant to understand in Kaduna State, for instance, on your way to Kacha, where today you have the Naval School, you have the School of Artillery and whatever, in between, you have uh, a livestock training school, which nationally everybody should be running to, but today is allowed wasting away. Now, going across all the northern states, you have one thing or the other. Again, Mr. Matthew Rikichi said there are research findings in ARDP that any responsible, a governor with foresight can go pick from the shelf and implement and within months, state from the south will run down to the north and say, how do you do this thing? How can we replicate this? And But that is not what we are seeing. We are seeing the same governors now saying the north is backward, the north is uneducated, the north, while this thing is at their fingertips and they are not implement. I mean, could it actually be a problem of we have people who are not actually prepared to be in leadership position in the first place? Well, uh, let me t uh, let me correct something. You mm. make reference to political science. Mm. You see, one of the beauty of political science mm. is that anybody who studies political science mm. can work anywhere, even in the kitchen. Yeah, even in the kitchen. So As a chef. Yes, and you, you you come up with something beautiful. Well, so compared to somebody who studies uh, 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 so, who studies so, food. So so I don't I don't like you mm. certain. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, well, okay. <laughs> let's not use political scientists for instance. So no, let's but, get back but, to but, me. Like, away from that. Yes. No, to be candid. Yes. We have people who are professionals. This is their field. All their life, this is what they know and what they view things like that. Now again, Mr. Mr. Kishu was talking about one of the greatest animal farmers in a state like Heduna today is retired AVM Stephen Shekari, mm -hmm. who is not an Hausa man, mm -hmm. he's not a full animal. Mm -hmm. And he was saying if somebody who is a professional, if a professor who studied agricultural extension and whatever or agriculture science, mm -hmm. for instance, go into farming as a business, he will make it more business, he will make it make a more success of it. We've seen that with, with uh, Murchala Nyaku, uh, for for instance, mm -hmm. who has made a huge success of farming both crop and animal. Yeah. But in terms of these governors as governors, I mean, is it lack of foresight or not even prepared to be in the position well, uh, that we're having this? You see, there are, it's a combination of many factors. Mm. But uh, fundamentally, I think it's from we, the community. Okay. In the northern Nigeria, the civil society uh, community mm. is not as vibrant as it should be. Because if you put, give somebody a responsibility, like a uh, Go governance. Anybody in government naturally is a suspect. Okay. When you give somebody a, uh, a position of authority, mm. you now put him and uh, don't believe that he, he, he will do the right thing. Put him as a suspect, somebody who may likely take advantage because of the power mm. factor. So, and then uh, you must constantly put him on check. Demand for Accountability. Are we doing that in the northern part of Nigeria? That is why I said the civil society are not doing so. And, and, it, the, and the populace itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, because the, pop, the civil society actually involved from the populace. Yeah. So if we organize ourselves and begin to demand for accountability, mm. you begin to see this, we're putting them on a, 
spotlight and they'll begin to do the, 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 the writing. But here in the northern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. by the time you raise a fundamental question that is constitutionally uh, your, 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 your constitutional right to do so, people will begin to see you as a miscreant. There's no kind of a opposition. opposition. You are giving all sorts of names. Sort and, name. and because of that, it takes only a few of us to sustain and uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and refuse to be black men by such a uh, name calling or what have you. So, and this is an area I think we need to be very, very we concentrate well, and the, build our civil society. We, 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 we in the and media which, are suffering the same thing. Precisely. Because and when they, you and bring issues up, the next thing is you are in opposition because they don't give you money or what, all sorts of names and what have you. So you can see. So there is a uh, need to, there is, there is need for the social, uh, I mean, civil society and the media to cooperate and work together as partners to expose this kind of, uh, you know, negligence and then what, what have you that the, the government are, committing that today is putting us into this serious uh, issue. Because as a media tool, you are supposed to be an agenda set setter. Mm -hmm. So if you put, uh, you, you, you can on your own even decide to look at maybe around a uh, budgetary issue, come up with something, throw it out, bring the civil society before you know a lot of uh, issue is made out of it. And the governors, the whoever, at whatever level, you begin to see them uh, sitting up. So, but again, that we are not doing. Even the political party, the process here in the north, I think is even one of the most uh, discouraging one. If you look at the leadership recruitment process, which you are now making reference to, that, uh, that, that, that leads to the emergence of the current leadership, you discover that the political parties are not doing what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And the, the processes, through the primaries and what have you, that produce the leaders today is characterized by a lot of fraud and uh, corruptions. So at the end of the day, what the, 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 the outcome of what you see is this kind of challenges that uh, today are not concerned about the real issue, they are not bothered about the welfare of the people, and even the most fundamental of them all, which is the security, that today you see the northern Nigeria is the most unsecure place in the world. And again, the, you see somebody who has been given opportunity as an executive governor for four years with all the enormous resources, the goodwill, and what have you, to that. correct those uh, anomalies. anomalies. Who now come and begin to talk as if it's, 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 it's not part of the. It's, it's, it's not responsible uh, for, for correcting those things that is. Uh, probably is telling us it's more part of the problem than the solution. Precisely. So, but again, when, when, when they come out and speak like this, mm. they get away with it. Nobody come out to, to reprimand them and tell them that you are responsible. Mm. You don't have the. You, you should be ashamed of your performance and uh, things like that. Uh, when well, you don't do all, the, all yeah, of those things, uh, uh, could I give them? Unfortunately, I think I've read more write ups from Southwesterners reacting to some of these issues. Yeah. Telling some of these governors you are even responsible than we even see from, from, from Northerners. No, again, you yeah. see, the Southerners, the angle they took mm. was the part that said that they are more corrupt than they know. That is where. That is what interests them. Mm. And that is what they responded to. But we, that know that people, these people are shamelessly lying to us mm. because they are responsible and they should be ashamed of their performance. But here they will look with bold, uh, strong face and tell us what they, the, the, some, something that's supposed not to be coming from them because we allow them to get away with so many so so so, 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 so sad. Mm. Mushal, our time is fast spent as it is. But, but then, uh, let's go to this issue of directives, counter directives and what have you, things like that. Um, I, I've read so much. Now we have the Northern Elders who met the day before yesterday and directed a look uh, the, nomad, the nomadic uh, hatman uh, in the south should come back to the north uh, to, uh, to, to actually ensure that they, they, they are safe. I remember, may so rest in peace, uh, late Dr. Bala Usman, the famous historian, uh, in those days when, we ch when, when people challenged him and said, what is Nigeria's uh, foreign policy? What is Nigeria benefiting from what you are doing from our neighbors? He always, I remember once, and he sat us down and said, look, if the Nigerians who sell slippers and other plastics in Ghana 
if anything should happen in Ghana and they are to come back to Nigeria, mm -hmm. that you cannot actually take care of them. Yes. So it will be in the best interest of Nigeria to ensure that Ghana it's is safe. in peace, is safe for us. Now, the same thing we are seeing. Now the northern elders are saying, look, uh, the nomadic hatsmen should come back to the north for their safety. And what. I mean, should that be what we should be having at this time? No. You see, this is why I said uh, we need to be very, very calculative. Mm. Today, we know there is crisis in the north. Nobody can deny yeah. it. And uh, because of that crisis, so many people are leaving the north. And including governor's children, like one of the governors shamelessly saying that his children ran to, to, to United yeah. States. He, be he begged them to come back. They come back. Now something happened to his house in Abuja and they ran back again. He doesn't know how to tell them. He doesn't know how to beg them to. I mean, I, a sitting governor. The, the best way for him to beg them mm -hmm. is for him to resign. And go and join his children. Precisely. And tell them that it's, a, it's an hopeless situation. Mm -hmm. But not to remain and be contributing to the worsening of the problem. So now, when you have this crisis, and uh, because of this crisis, that is what forced many of them, when this cultural wrestling started, mm -hmm. you see a Fulani man who has no Western education, no Islamic education, no vocational, you know, this kind of trading stuff. Yeah. The only thing he knows is those cartoons. Uh, it's hard, it's cartoons. And uh, over centuries, this is something that has been, mm -hmm. he has inherited. It's hereditary. And, yeah, all of a sudden. And this maybe this is a man who is worth like fifty to hundred million there. overnight. Somebody will come and rest the entire cow and left him empty handed. With nothing. With nothing, with not even hope. Because somebody will have hope when he knows that he has maybe knowledge or yeah. skill to go and something to fall on. Now, when this thing was happening, what one expected is for the governors and even the government to know that there's going to be repercussion for this. At the long run. At the long run. Because these people must survive. And if they have to survive, survival in this case can come from any necessary, you know. Any available means. 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 Hmm. And uh, eventually see what started happening. This kidnapping and what have you. This is what escalated. And now you are saying they should come back to the same environment that is not safe. Hmm. What are you actually doing? What are you saying? Do you, are you actually sincere? Do you even have what they require the uh, capacity to accommodate them? And where are you calling them to come back and see them? Mm -hmm. So, but again, because they just want to talk, they just want to create, a, they, they want to heat up the environment, the, the, the political mm -hmm. temperature. All this uh, grandstanding is taking place. But we understand that uh, this is not the best approach. Mm -hmm. So that is why at the ARDP, we are taking conscious and scientific uh, uh, means mm. in addressing these issues. So Nigeria today, like, like I said in one of my interviews, we should not, as Northerners, we know we have, uh, we have the land, we have the populations, we have what it takes. And uh, we also know that since independence, you know the, 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 the South, particularly the Southwesterner and what have you, these are people that are very good in noise making. They will, they Some, will, somebody said they have the media. Uh, yes, so they will, they, they will give an impression like today, if you have not done to them what they are looking for, mm -hmm. the entire system will collapse and nothing will happen. And nothing will happen because the, 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 the past leaders, they are people who are very creative. Okay. Who are deeply in touch with each other and working assiduously to ensure that there is stability at the most fundamental, you know, uh, level. Well, we're we having that today. But again, we are not having that, and that is why we are saying, ARDP is saying that we must return to that part. Coming out grandstanding is not, it's not, it's not for us, because we stand to benefit anything from that. So we must be scientific in our approach. Mm. And we also must, it's our responsibility, because we have the largest population, to ensure others that uh, this is what we are doing, and doing, doing it for the survival mm -hmm. and the stability of Nigeria. But, but again, I mean, Richard, I mean that, that was going to be my next question. If the northern Nigeria have more than 70 percent of the land mass, yeah, it's if northern Nigeria, it's, it's 78.9 percent, almost 80 percent of yeah. the land mass, yeah. if northern Nigeria have almost 70 plus of the population yeah. are what of you. Mm -hmm. And we are talking, when we talked about almost 80% of the land, we are talking about arable land. Yeah. 
We are talking of lands that can take virtually everything. As we speak today, it's only Niger State that has actually mm -hmm. said, come on, this, this, this forest reserve has been here. Come and take it, take over and whatever. As of yesterday, we met to understand a lot of other development partners were already going to Niger and say, we are interested, we want to, and whatever you, things like that. What is it with our northern governors that they don't even think of what is even just at their backyard? That's right. And that is why we are saying, hmm. recognizing that this problem is actually, uh, you can locate it within the capacity of the kind of governors we have. So, like Mr. Kichi hmm. rightly pointed out, yeah. at the ARVP, there's what is called Strategic Agenda for Northern Development, Okay. which most of these things you are talking about, Idea for which, the which probably the governors don't even know exist. No, they know because they were engaged. And why are they, Why are we not seeing them it's implementing just, it's, that? Is the, the lack of the uh, lack of political will. But you can see uh, some of the governors are now embracing okay. some of these uh, policies, policy, okay. like the Bochi State government, okay. government, the new governor. Yeah, Bala so, so you can see even the blueprint, the uh, development blueprint, everything was actually developed and designed mm. for the state by the ARVP, and they are also going to partner together and see that that uh, oh, you, you know, Mota, we talk about this, because it's quite interesting. Again, we sat down and look at all the northern states. Only Niger State has a ministry. Ministry, as far as the issue of livestock mm. and animal husbandry is concerned. Yeah. And you ask yourself, I mean, are these, northern, are these northern governors actually in tune with the reality? In, in Kaduna State, for reason we're meant to understand, you just have a sector which is under another department. And for a state, I mean, how did we get there? So, I th uh, well, there are, you can attribute this uh, to many factors. Mm -hmm. But like I said, sometimes we need to minimize the blame games. We must okay. concentrate actually on finding solutions. And but when the governors who are supposed to find solutions seems to be like a lame dog. Don't worry, you will continue to engage them mm. permanently. And then also this part of advocacy and what you are doing at this platform, mm. I think it's a commendable one that uh, we must commend you for it. I Which some governors see as a threat. Well, uh, <laughs> definitely you can be doing good things and you expect everybody to welcome it. Okay. Because if, for instance, the governors are serious and are doing the right thing, they will see you as partner. Mm -hmm. And because they are not doing that, and you are not calling for uh, their attention to no. the right thing f for them to do, they will see you as... But again, I can assure you that uh, a lot of uh, people of goodwill look onto this program and they are very appreciative of the of, of your doggedness and commitment to, to, to it. So these are the kind of uh, area that we should be concentrating. Uh, we must not be discouraged, we must not despair, and we con to continue to engage. Just like I said to you, you can see we had a, 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 in, in Bochi State there was there was a transition. And because there is a new government in place who recognizes that the only way to sustain the 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 the, 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 the support of the people is through pro provision of dividends of democracy. And you are seeing how committed and how, how serious mm. the governor has been. You are seeing the Sarasukas dropping their weapons. Definitely. Beg, I, begging for empowerment and other things. So this is how to go. So we must not lose hope. We must continue to engage. We must continue to advocate. And we must, we, we must show, we must double our co with, uh, commitment, commitment towards this system. Okay, mm -hmm. as, we, as, as we do this, of course, some of us will not relent. I've said it here, it was in northern Nigeria that a young man uh, criticized a governor and said his, himself and his children are into money laundering, and the young man ended up in prison. Today, the same governor is battling the same money laundering case with, with, with the FCC. That's right. That is, uh, <laughs> I actually don't. Mm -hmm. The, the state of the president, Katina State, has become the home. In fact, Katina is worse than Zamfara today. Why are you concerned about Katina? Is it because they are your state? No, no, no. I, I, I'm less <laughs> using it as I mean, as a yes. The president is from Katina State. Okay, because I, I, I a lot know. of policymakers, I mean, people within this administration from Katina State. Mm -hmm. But as we are talking today, Katina is even worse hit yeah. than Zamfara. Yeah. Zamfara, with the new governor, we see the progress he has made within 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 two within two months. On daily basis, people are being killed. I'm not trying. But we saw what is going on in Akure now. Yes. Akure has become a marker of a sort. That's right. Where everybody trooped to the home of a power, Ruben Fasorenti. Mm -hmm. But the whole north, and I was telling somebody, you don't blame the southerners. Mm -hmm. How many northerners, state elites, have come to say, I'm coming to condole with these people? 
Again, the media is that. I remember Professor Buga, uh, Dr. Bugaja said that several times. Some of some things in the north are unreported. Yeah. But when less than that happened in the south, it becomes a national issue. Yeah, yeah. Who do we blame for this? And uh, also making reference to Katina, mm. I think uh, because of the level of political enlightenment yeah. in Katina and the elite, that is why you see they are not leaving many of these killing or reporting. That mm -hmm. today you are thinking that the scale in Katana is far above that of, that of Zampara. Zampara is because you have a society, a community, mm -hmm. people who are I don't like to use the word dosa. Mm -hmm. But, see, this but they I, are, to a large extent. People have said that. But that's why I said I, yeah. I, did, I didn't say it loudly. Well, all I right. Them to hear well, it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, and because of that, these things are happening on a daily basis. Yeah. The elite are all consigned, and nobody is supporting it. And it, because the, 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 the atrocity in Zampara, for the last seven years, if only you know mm -hmm. the level of destruction yeah. and damage done to those people. Number of people killed, killed women, and, young girls, raped. Raped and, and traumatized. Yeah. You, 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 you equate it to the situation in Kigali. But, so again, but again, because it was not reported, mm -hmm. and the people are... That conspiracy of silence. See it as normal, and are will tell you, the, gov the, yeah, the governor will tell you that this thing is happening because of uh, people are, there is fornication all over the mm -hmm. places, and nobody called him to order. So, but again, in the case of Katina, you are beginning to see the more it, it happened, they are reporting it, and, yeah. and, 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 and it's creating national... Uh, the voice yesterday, we saw, we saw some of the elites coming together, mm -hmm. retired military administrators, police officers, and all So that's how to do uh, it. And that, like that. That's why to, how to do it. And that is why I tell you that we must not relent. We must continue to talk. But coming to the mm -hmm. issue of uh, what happened in the Southwest, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is actually telling us that until you as people Stand organize up. yourself yeah. and take yourself very seriously seriously Outside before others you serious. and even government will take you serious so if so today so people will be massacred as much as 100 in zampara and the governor will be in abuja mm. or in london the former governor or in, du or in dubai so I, I cannot see how federal government will show that seriousness and begin to come and uh, pay condolence and what have you so uh, it is when we take ourselves serious that people will begin to take us take serious it. and All this right. is what we must ensure that Happen everywhere. All right. Uh, what was it? I started a write up. I said, Parfas Orenti, because this is somebody I know one on one, like I related somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> the not should blame itself for some of these issues. But then uh, it's unfortunate when strangers will co enter your house and tell you that you cannot actually keep your shoe in the sitting room, take it to the bedroom. Uh, but again, sadly, when you are the kind of a household uh, who doesn't even care about your own house, uh, definitely that will happen. Well, on that note, we end the program this morning. This morning, Murchala. Abubakar he is actually, uh, if I say in charge or convener, it won't be, it won't be wrong. Joint, Joint Action Committee of uh, Northern Youth Association. He's also a member of uh, Ariwa Research and Development Project, ARDP, that body that has done so much. Mushala, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Uh, thank this you morning. so much. All right. There you are. Thank you for investing your time with us. Uh, let's do it again tomorrow, same station, same time, when we shall be talking about, about other issues. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Good morning.